have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann North. And uh, it's Pride Month. I, I read it in the paper from Bloomingdale's in a full page ad. We have become consumers, not uh, a and movement anymore. And maybe we've become irrelevant. <laughs> maybe. I well. yearn. I yearn for that day. <laughs> yes. But until then, we have some news to report on and discuss tonight, starting with yet another federal court ruling declaring the Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act unconstitutional, this time in the New York case brought by Edie Windsor, who you remember is a guest on this show. We'll show you a little of her and talk about the case. Mitt Romney's uh, gay neighbor in California has a problem with him. Several gay neighbors. Gay. Six, six in this his La, neighbor. La Jola. And some other right-wing billionaire is putting up a million dollars seems like a paltry amount compared to his riches, to elect Republicans who support same-sex marriage. Maybe a million dollars will do it because there aren't that many Republicans who support same-sex marriage. It's a bad idea. Uh, a right-wing study, I put that in quotes, purporting to show that kids of uh, parents who are gay do worse in life uh, is given a lot of play in the mainstream media and then attacked vigorously by the gay establishment. We will uh, deconstruct this study in uh, detail. A transgender uh, military veteran is fighting to re-enlist in the United States Army. Uh, a Senate committee, United States Senate, held hearings on the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, but uh, the Republican House is not going to touch it. LGBT groups have banded together to fight against racist uh, NY police department tactics. There's a big march this Sunday. We'll give you the details. Denmark. I think the first country to give us any kind of uh, relationship recognition. 1987 it or 89? It was a long time ago. It was the eight, late well, anyway, they're they are finally opening marriage to same-sex couples. More broadly than some other companies. But in Russia, a Moscow court has banned gay pride parades for, wait for it, <laughs> 100 years. How much do they hate us? Don't you think you might change your mind in 100 <laughs> years? You know, when they interviewed people, I'll just uh, when they interviewed people uh, about 10 years, oh, around the time of the millennium, uh, they, they said, do you think we will have same-sex marriage in this century? And two-thirds of people said, sure. I'm against it now, but sure we're going to have it before the century's <laughs> over. Anyway, uh, a New York court has ruled that the saliva of an HIV-positive po man is not a dangerous instrument under the law. June 27th is National HIV Testing Day, and you can find out where to go for an HIV test at HIVtest.org. We will tell you about that and some other developments in HIV and AIDS news. No matter where you go in the world, you can just put in HIVtest.org and you can find out. Uh, uh, another but every day is HIV testing day. Yet another study, this one not in quotes, found that young people with less firmly defined sexual orientations are more prone to substance abuse. Well, they're confused. Uh, and our new best friend is Carrie Underwood. Details to follow. Okay. But we start in New York with yet another federal court decision on the Defense of Marriage Act. Now, the right wing is now zero for five on these. We started last week's program by telling you about how the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in California was refusing a larger hearing on the Prop 8 case after a subset of that court had decided that Section 3 was unconstitutional. And that could go to the Supreme Court, but the prediction is that the court won't take it, because, but that's the next step in that case. And in Boston, the First Circuit had also decided that Section 3 was unconstitutional, and that may get to the Supreme Court faster. And that was the first 
appeals court decision that we won. But the, the victory this week was from a federal judge at the first level uh, in the uh, Edie Windsor case. We had Edie on the show here. Uh, Edie uh, is the uh, surviving uh, wife. wife. I was going to say she's the widow um, of uh, Thea Spire. And uh, when Thea died, uh, they were a well-to-do couple, and uh, Edie had to pay three, oh, really almost five hundred thousand dollars in extra taxes that Estate she would, taxes. that she would not have had to pay had their marriage been recognized by the federal government. Edie is eighty-three years old. She and Thea were together for well over forty years. They decided to get married in Canada when uh, Thea developed multiple sclerosis, and they could see that they're, you know, they were not going to live forever. And New York State at that point was recognizing same-sex marriages uh, performed in other jurisdictions, even though its court system had refused to legalize same-sex marriages performed here. And so when Thea died and Edie had to pay these extra estate taxes that uh, as a married couple they should not have been required to pay, she went to court and the ACLU and uh, uh, Robbie Kaplan at Paul Weiss uh, were representing her and big win in the federal district court, the Southern District well, of New York saying that Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act, which forbids federal recognition of same-sex legal marriages uh, is unconstitutional, right. and therefore she should not be required to pay those extra taxes. Uh, the judge was Barbara Jones, a Bill Clinton appointee. Uh, some of the other judges who've ruled in our favor have been Republican-appointed judges, but Edie was granted summary judgment in this case. Yes. Uh, the other side, which is represented by House Republicans, basically, they call themselves the bipartisan advisory group, even though the Democrats always vote against even going in there, and Nancy Pelosi says, let's cut this out. We're losing all these cases and you're wasting our money. That's another story. But anyway, they moved for dismissal of this case, and that didn't happen. They also said that Edie Windsor shouldn't have standing because she got married in Canada. Well, well, what they said was that the New York courts had refused to legalize marriage here, and therefore her marriage should not be recognized. But but, what, the, New, but the New York courts do recognize out-of-state marriages and had ruled that, that way all yes, the way to the so Court of Appeals. that was summarily dismissed. So without having to go through a huge, long uh, trial on this, the court said this is so patently unconstitutional that we are making a summary judgment. We don't have to apply heightened scrutiny. This just fails even a rational basis test. There is absolutely no reason that uh, the third section of the Defense of Marriage Act should be considered constitutional on any basis. And it went through all the arguments that the right wing made and said, don't be ridiculous. It doesn't preserve traditional marriage. It doesn't stop uh, the states uh, from uh, uh, from making their own decisions about who gets married. And they also rejected the argument that Mike Bloomberg successfully made at our Court of Appeals here in New York, which is that the government needs to steer heterosexuals into, uh, who are procreating into married households. She rejected that. She rejected everything, just out of hand. She just wrote a terrific decision that just demolished all the right-wing yeah. arguments. I mean, she said the idea that that, that, that argument is going to deter heterosexuals from having children outside of marriage is remote Ridiculous. at best, but accepted by the New York Court of Appeals, which delayed same-sex marriage in uh, being performed in the state of New York. So what I love about all this is that uh, John Boehner and the House Bipartisan Legal uh, Advisory Group hired this hotshot lawyer, Paul Clement, to represent mm -hmm. them in all these cases. He is a hotshot. He argues many, many cases before the United States Supreme Court and often wins. And is uh, uh, talked about as the next Supreme Court justice uh, who will be nominated by a Republican president. Do you need any more reason to vote for Barack Obama over Mitt Romney? Well, the irony is that he has lost every single one of these cases, that he has not been able able to come up with a single new argument to justify the Defense of Marriage Act. He has uh, lost hands down in every court, in every case, Republican appointed judges by every Republican uh, president, and it's just a complete loss for them. But people need to understand out there that we are not talking about 
declaring a right of same-sex couples constitutionally to get married across no. the board throughout the... No, people need to understand that. So that if we win this case, the states will still have control over who can get married in their states. That issue may be adjudicated someday. Uh, but what will happen is that those couples that are legally married will get federal rights. And we've, we've raised this issue with James Essex at the ACLU. So what if you live in Alabama and you go to New York and you get married? You will be legally married. Uh, Alabama won't recognize it. Will the federal government recognize it? We would say they should. He wasn't 100% sure about that. Well, it'll be more litigation and we'll win 10 more cases. Edie and... doesn't have time though. We need to hear from Edie on this, I think. All right. Well, Edie did uh, hold a press conference last week when this decision came down and recorded a thank you message to her supporters about how happy she is at having won this case. Well, obvious, it's obvious why it's important to me. At Initially, it was important because of the money. Uh, it changed totally in the course of, of the, I guess, the many months that we've been going. Uh, so that more and more people in the gay community thanked me for what I was doing, and I became more and more involved in everybody's life and wanting, uh, wanting the right thing for them. I didn't want anybody to have to repeat what I what I experienced with the and uh, and and the win, the news yesterday just thrilled and elated me. I don't know what else to say except thank you, every single person who I, I met on the street or in a game meeting or anything else, for the support that I got. Uh, they made me feel so important. And, uh, and then I had to just keep going. It's crazy because I, I made five phone calls to five people who were very close to me and who would take care of me and things like that. And, uh, and then I did nothing. I just kept walking around the house saying, oh my God, <laughs> oh, we won. And by then people were, were learning it. So the phone calls were coming in you know, by the hundreds. My immediate reaction, I must say, was I wanted to tell the same thing if something bad, hap very bad happens or something wonderful happens. I want to talk to Thea and I want to talk to my mother. <laughs> no, I did. I, I talked to the pictures. I walked around saying, OK, honey, we did it. <laughs> you know. uh, but uh, that's it. Yeah. And there's a documentary a movie about their lives together called Edie and Thea, A Very Long Engagement. You can find it online, I think. But congratulations, Edie. Congratulations to Robbie Kaplan and James Essex, the lawyers. And thanks to everybody for continuing to do these fights. Now, there is one of the cases that's uh, still being argued, because all these cases are, is of uh, Karen Galinsky in California, who's uh, an employee of the federal court system and married her partner and uh, is suing for federal benefits as a, uh, an employee of the federal government, and she's been winning. But in the latest uh, round of that case, uh, amicus briefs are being filed, and there is a new amicus brief by former Attorney General Ed Meese. Is he still alive? And former Attorney General John Ashcroft. Oh. <laughs> Which side are they on? They Who's, say- Who are they friendly with? They are filing a brief saying that the Department of Justice is wrong to oppose the Defense of Marriage Act, that they have a duty to, uh, to defend the Defense of Marriage Act uh, because the Constitution requires them to execute the laws uh, unless they are patently unconstitutional. Well, there you are. Exactly. It is patently unconstitutional. Well, you know, uh, uh, the Attorney General of the State of New York, Bob Abrams, at the time of the sodomy laws, would not defend the sodomy laws because they were patently unconstitutional. Well, unfortunately, there is a whole raft of state attorneys general and Republican senators, and of course, the National Organization for Marriage, who are all filing amicus briefs defending so, DOMA in why these not? cases. Let them. 
It's well, a free it's, country. It's discouraging the state <laughs> attorneys general. Uh, would, then would everybody defend, pay though. more attention to who your attorney general is. The Colorado in your state. attorney general. Pay is. attention to who gets elected in these elections, folks, because it makes a big, big difference. Well, four more uh, Obama cabinet secretaries are uh, defending marriage equality: Labor Secretary Hilda Solis, HHS Secretary Kathleen Sebelius, Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner. And the very unfortunate Commerce Secretary, John <laughs> okay. Bryson. Well, he's not, he's on leave. Uh, uh, everybody's getting into the act, except, uh, well, uh, Eric Holder did not mention that he supported uh, marriage equality in his Pride Month speech, but uh, anyway. Well, they. Uh, um, his, his department is fighting the Defense Correct. of Marriage Act. Correct. What more do you want him to do? I, I want him to speak out about it the way the way, the way Barack Obama did. Because he's such a popular the, guy? The way, well, I know he's in trouble. The way <laughs> Barack Obama did at his big fundraiser in Los Angeles, yes. uh, where, you know, apparently just stood there and he really has his wrap down on gay stuff and just ticked off all the things that his administration is doing. He's very, very conscious of it. He's very he, good. he has a list. He no goes to every fun right. Oh, come on. No, no, no. I'm just I'm talking about on gay Please. stuff. Yes, he has a list that they've been touting for a year now. Uh, at that Department of Justice Pride event, they honored the six uh, students from the Anoka Hennepin uh, District in Minnesota who sued over the school district's failure to stop harassment and bullying, and evidently it was quite a wonderful ceremony. Uh, also on board for marriage equality, the daughter of Representative Steny Hoyer of Maryland, who is the Who also just came out for same-sex marriage. <laughs> oh, because his... 43-year-old daughter, Stephanie, has just come out as a lesbian. She's just come out to him? <laughs> no, not just come out we to him, know. but publicly. Uh, she has a partner. They're both nurses, and they're joining the fight for marriage equality. All right. And the, California has told Fred Carger, the Republican presidential candidate, that it will investigate his complaint against the National Organization for Marriage for failing to report all its contributions uh, from people like the Mormon Church and Mitt Romney in the uh, fight against uh, the fight for. Uh, Proposition 8. And if you could get some Democrats elected down there in Texas, there is hope because the Texas Democratic Convention uh, endorsed the repeal of the Defense of Marriage Act, endorsed marriage equality, had a transgender delegate down there. This is what uh, one of our viewers, Laura, uh, wrote to us about. They're all getting excited. But the right wing in Washington has gathered enough signatures to put a question on the November ballot about blocking the marriage law already passed by the legislature. That right. Now, Washington governor. State is the place where in 2009 they tried to overturn the domestic partners law that they had, and the right wing was unsuccessful there. We, we got that domestic partners law. I mean, the latest polling is 54 percent supporting, uh, you know, upholding the marriage law now but they haven't been warned about what it's going to do to the children. And that's what the right wing, of course, will do in their campaign. Uh, more about that in a minute. But uh, first of all, in the current issue of The New Yorker, there is a big profile of Brian Fisher of the American Family Association by Jane Mayer. He's the one who good. got Rom, you know, knocked off Romney's gay appointee, yeah. uh, Grinnell. Uh, and then, uh, speaking of the right wing, there's Paul Singer. Paul Singer is a very wealthy hedge fund billionaire who has a gay son who supports same-sex marriage, and he gives a lot of money to gay groups, including the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force. But he also goes around the country electing complete right wing nuts. Much more money to Republican candidates than to marriage equality or gay groups. Correct. So that's because that's what his really th his real thing is. He wants Republican legislatures that let legislatures that aren't going to undo his. Uh, 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 had his billions, basically. Anyway, he has now put up a, a $1 million for a super PAC with several Republican compatriots uh, to uh, uh, give some money to those few Republicans who do support same-sex marriage. But, I mean, in the long run, you go with this guy, you get, you get anti-gay legislatures. Exactly. 
Uh, I'm uh, I'm in favor of uh, trying to change the world by going to everyone, but the realistic situation these days is that you just can't. You well, know, we've got to overturn the Republican House. You've got to overturn Republican majorities in the, in the state legislatures too. Yes. Uh, you, they have been devastating to this country this year. Here are a couple of Louisiana Republican congressmen who are freaking out because uh, two lesbians held a commitment ceremony at an army post in Louisiana. Louisiana, Fort Pope. One is a member of the military, one is a civilian. Don't they believe in freedom of expression? Well, they're going on and on about how, you know, marriage is not legal in Louisiana. Well, of course, we know that. It wasn't a marriage. It was a commitment ceremony, perfectly legal, perfectly voluntary on the part of the chaplain who performed it. And they're just, uh, you know, they are losing their boy, minds. Boy, oh boy, this. they're into their rights when they want to use public space for religious ceremonies. Exactly. Uh, and the ACLU and six North Carolina couples this week filed suit to overturn a North Carolina law which forbids uh, LGBT uh, couples from executing second parent adoptions. So I hope they're successful there. Right. I mean, you know, Romney once said, well, you know, gay adoption is illegal only in like one st state, but second parent adoptions are illegal many places. Lots of places. But that brings us to this big study that was published this week. Now, there's this uh, researcher, a professor who works for the University of Texas at Austin, which is generally a progressive place. But this guy is a contrarian uh, right winger. His name is Mark Regneris, R-E-G-N-E-R-U-S, and his study is called New Family Structures study. A little background on him. He is famous for a couple of things. Urging women to marry young to take advantage of their fertility. <laughs> and uh, proclaiming his faith to his students in class and chuckling about the fact that that upsets more liberal uh, professors and administrators. My economics professor in college was like that too. Yeah, yes. proclaiming his faith yes. in oh class. Yes, oh my goodness. So this new, so here's the deal. There have been a lot, a number of studies of kids of same-sex parents all of which have found uniformly that uh, kids of same-sex parents do just as well as kids of heterosexual parents, and in some cases, maybe even a little better, having been brought up in slightly more progressive households. A little more open-minded, shall we say? But these are all small studies. So this guy decides he wants to do a bigger, more comprehensive study. But to do that, you have to spend a ton of money to get access to huge data sets. So he goes out and he gets three quarters of a million dollars from right-wing organizations. Right. The Witherspoon Foundation. Mostly Witherspoon the Witherspoon. Witherspoon Institute, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, which is a very right-wing organization. And they're connected with Focus on the Family and all this other kind of stuff. So here's what he does. He gets access to data sets from polling organizations. But rather than getting like heterosexual married couples versus uh, same-sex couples that have established households, he just looks for kids 18 to 39, I think, or adults 18 to 39, right. who have been raised in households where one of the parents has at some point had a same-sex encounter. Exactly. Could, not, be a, could be a prostitute not who say, tried to trick with a woman. Not established same-sex couples. Not mostly because of the age of these adults. Uh, uh, adults from families that were originally heterosexual have gone through divorce. So there's and a lot separation. of. So there's a lot of. Most of these people were divorced. It's apples and oranges because he's comparing them to long-standing heterosexual married couples, and surprise. Uh, and, and also uh, adults from uh, split up heterosexual right. couples. And, you know, some of the media immediately just launches in, puts this guy on the tube like ABC did and, say, and lets him spout off. And they say things like, oh, uh, you know, kids in these kids who were raised by gays ha are worse off. They just say it. So, now that, so LGBT groups say to this guy directly, wait a minute, you're comparing apples and oranges here. This is not a study that is of uh, comparable households and couples, and and you've just gone off and randomly d thrown the word gay into searches and come up with like three gay fathers and 70 lesbian mothers, and, 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 and the kids didn't even live with 
these people or, and, or were raised by them. And he said, they gave me a million dollars. What the hell do you think I'm no, going to do? No, <laughs> no. He said it would have been far more expensive to come up with enough actually comparable couples and and these people are older and i would have had to go to younger kids to right, get right. comparable households we now. are laughing but we shouldn't be because this is the kind of crap that will now be cited forever and ever in advertising by the right wing against same-sex marriage et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A new study they'll even say abc said etc well they we first heard about this because the uh rumor was that the new york times was going to publish this uh study as as wonderfully authoritative, and we heard that the Associated Press and USA Today had rejected it. As it turns out, the Times, after a huge outcry from LGBT groups, published a, a more skeptical article. But well, still, the way the, way the, the, way the Times still, ended up uh, um, leading their story was saying young adults from broken homes in which a parent had a same-sex relationship Ugh. reported modestly more psycho psychological and social problems in their current lives than peers from other families that experienced divorce and disruptions. So, you know. The reason the earlier smaller studies are valid is because they very carefully did pick comparable households and compare the outcomes for now, uh, children. Uh, now, this is not to say that just as gay children have problems growing up and, we, you know, and uh, suicidality and all these other kinds of things, that kids are not teased because they have gay parents. I mean, but these are the problems in the society uh, that we have to deal with. I mean, I've done my own study of my two <laughs> stepsons raised by uh, their biological mother and me for many years who are happy, successful, uh, wonderful adults in their 40s who I adore and who have had very wonderful lives and are fantastic human beings. Thanks, Mom. That's all the study I need. Thanks, Mom. Okay. All right. Next. All right. Um, Politics? Well, yeah, sure. Well, I mean, uh, the well, we should say that uh, our Employment Non-Discrimination Act, which would affect the entire country, this has been pending in Congress for about 100 years yeah. now, uh, it, it just covers employment and it covers sexual orientation and gender identity and expression, but it was given a hearing in the Senate and for the first time in the Senate, they had a transgender witness. Uh, I thought that was the first time ever in Congress. No, in now, the House they've done it. Kyler Broadus, uh, an African-American uh, transgender man, lawyer from Missouri uh, on the board of the National Black Justice Coalition. Uh, yes, first transgender Senate witness. Very, so it's not going to get a vote. Uh, eloquent. It's not going to get a vote in the House, but it but it should get a vote in the Senate. And it should, but it, it's not scheduled for one at the moment. They're asking for one, but uh, and don't. Call Harry Reid. <laughs> Tell him you want to vote. <laughs> Tell him you want a law. All right, well, speaking of politicians, a few political notes. Uh, San Diego held its mayoral primary last week, and uh, the two winners who will have, uh, who will face off against each other in November are the gay conservative Republican, Carl DeMeo, who has been seeking right-wing support, and the straight liberal Democrat, Bob Filner. We're not for the gay guy. Nope, not in that case. Um, a young gay Democrat, Jacob Candelaria, won a primary for New Mexico State Senate. He will be the first out New Mexico legislator, which will reduce the number of legislatures with out LGBT representation to 15. That's still a lot. Whew. So uh, Mitt Romney has houses in about 12 places, basically. 150. How can you, you know, of course this country likes to elect uh, rich people, uh, so watch out. But his house in La Jolla, uh, California, the, they are near San Diego, uh, is causing a lot of controversy because, well, first of all, because it means a lot of presence of the Secret Service and all this other kind of stuff. And because he's building a garage with an elevator. And he wants to make it bigger. So uh, some of the neighbors don't like it, and this time story in the home section goes on and on, and most of the, half the people they interview are gay couples in the neighborhood who are not having any of it. There are half a dozen of them. Well, one of them, uh, one young man in town recalled Mr. Romney confronted him as he smoked marijuana and drank on the beach last number, 
demanding that he stop. <laughs> now, the president executes the laws. Now, maybe this is in his favor, you know. He will be on top of things and nothing will escape his attention. Now, this is a holdover from his youth because another thing we heard about Romney this week was oh, that yeah. when he was in school, right. he had a sta Michigan State Troopers uniform. That, that his that daddy is gave me. His father was the governor. And he would go out and pull over cars on the highway in wearing his state troopers uniform. This guy is a sick dog. <laughs> don't say dog and Romney. I know. But here's another story that is really, you, you know, you don't think the uh, childhood stories are relevant. Well, here's what he did as governor of Massachusetts six years ago. In 2006, uh, Governor Romney's Department of Public Health in Massachusetts blocked publication of a school anti-bullying guide because it included references to bisexual and transgender students. Well, they blocked it. Transgenders sent the Congress into a tizzy and they dropped that out of ENDA a couple of years ago. It's back Remember? in. Remember? It's back in. Of course in. it is. And there is, a new, there is a new group of uh, transgender supporters of President Obama's re-election, and you can find out more about that at their website, transunitedforobama.org. Uh, and that's transunitedforobama.org. They also have a Facebook page, uh, transunited number for Obama. Now now, we've told you about Charlie Crist many times, so none of this is news to you, but this is the former governor of Florida, lost, lost a Senate race there. Um, he is uh, being exposed more about, about his homosexuality because there are allegations now that as governor, he paid two men to leave the state to hide his homosexuality and that he was a drunk and a liar. This is all coming out in a... He uh, denies it. Oh, yeah, he denies it. <laughs> he also evidently tried to kiss the head of the Republican Party in Florida or something. At a hotel in Beverly Hills. He denies it. Uh, it, and it, uh, also in political news at the Boston Pride Parade this past weekend, lots of Democratic politicians marched, members of Congress, the governor, everybody, all the Democratic politicians, no Republicans, including the gay Republican, Rich Tsai, who is running for Congress, did not show up at the Pride Parade. Well. You know, if you wondered whether there was any bipartisanship left, uh, forget it. Now, uh, New Mexico looks like it's going to get its first out gay state legislate. We just talked we about talk that. Okay. And uh, in uh, the Boy Scouts of America are actually pondering allowing LGBT scouts and leaders. Well, they, let's take it easy on that. I mean, they, they got a big uh, petition in this case of... 275,000 uh, signatures. Uh, Terrell, what's her name? Jennifer Terrell, yes. so, Ohio. So all they're saying is we don't have... It said, their quote is, we have no plans at the moment to make any changes, but we will, rev we will review it. We will look at it. The I mean, thinking is they might allow local options next year. Well, I mean... Maybe the, that's pie in the sky. The Boy Scouts we'll in see. New York took a lot of heat off themselves by saying... By it's claiming up to, it. It's claiming it. It's up to the local... But uh, every time... It's up to the local uh, uh, troop. But... Nobody ever, te nobody in New York ever tested that to well, see if that, if that would be accepted. Well, every time, uh, Philadelphia, they made a similar claim. Every time a local troop or a local organization has claimed that they, ha that they have local option, the National has denied that right. and punished them for it and reined them in. But it may very well be, uh, end up as a way to go to take some of the heat off the Boy right. Scouts. Uh, bad news from... Uh, where, oh, Minnesota, where Cece McDonald, oh, yeah. who we've told you about, uh, the transgender woman who uh, uh, was convicted of uh, killing a harasser who was chasing her down the street. All she did was pull out a pair of scissors to defend herself, and the guy impaled himself on that. And she is now getting three and a half years mm. in prison. Uh, uh, there have been a lot of demonstrations out there. Leslie Feinberg, the famous uh, author and activist, was arrested for writing free CC graffiti on the jailhouse uh, mm -hmm. uh, walls. Uh, and CC is going to be starting her prison sentence in a male prison. 
She will then be evaluated for whether she will continue to receive hormones, whether she will end up in solitary confinement. It's just a hideous situation. Wow. Uh, also of interest is uh, uh, transgender uh, uh, Ashley Ackley, formerly mm -hmm. John, was a member of the National Guard, served in Iraq in 2009, uh, and is applying to re-enlist. Well, the interesting thing is uh, transgendered people are considered administratively unfit to exactly. serve. However, uh, they sort of say, you can be around if we need you for cannon fodder. Well, that's what they always said to gay people, yeah. uh, men and women, uh, before they got rid of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. But this was so fascinating to the local news uh, that they did a report on it, and we have that for you. Ashley Ackley would be the first to tell you she tries to avoid gender ideals. I've tried to um, stay away from getting into gender, getting really into the gender roles. Yet as she works on her Chevy Cover, she's a contradiction of stereotypes. Not every woman can repair a classic car, but not every man will go for a pink interior. I just kind of want to be me. But Bean Ashley is still relatively new. For years, the world knew her as John Ackley, an Iraq War veteran with the Minnesota National Guard. When active duty was coming to an end, John started making the transition. I figured there would be boards and I would have to talk to people all the way up the chain of command. And, but no, they were fine with it. After legally changing her name, Ashley also started hormone therapy. Everything just seems easier now. The only part of her old life still missing is her military career. It's the structure, the, the discipline, the training, the people. Ashley says she's in the process of trying to re-enlist and she doesn't have to look far for support. Her story is becoming a source of pride in the GLBT community. They are highly moved by her story and yet at the same time uh, really respect and honor the fact that she has come so far. The decision to make a change came easily for Ashley. It's really where I should have been in the first place. Time will tell if that change is as easy for the military. There have been a lot of transgender veterans uh, who've had to fight for care in VA hospitals, for instance, and the, the military does forbid their service, and uh, that'll be the next uh, frontier of change that right. we're fighting for. And uh, SAGE, Services and Advocacy for uh, GLBT Elders, uh, and the National Center for Transgender Equality have come out with a new report on improving the lives of transgender older adults and recommendations for policy and practice. You can go to their websites, uh, sageusa.org or transgenderequality.org and read about that. On the other end, HRC, the Human Rights Campaign, has a new study of 10,000 LGBT teens that they have issued uh, as Chad Griffin takes over as the executive director or president of HRC. The study finds those teens are profoundly disconnected from their communities, uh, self-reported, but resilient and optimistic. Yes, I think we have to focus on the assets of young people as opposed to all the pathologies. As we have said over and over and over ad nauseum for many, many years, uh, LGBT teens, for the most part, uh, come to a self-realization of their identity uniquely in families where they are different from their other family members. Not 100%, For the most part. But, uh, but it is a unique experience, and therefore they have a lot to cope with. And Chad Griffin will be coming to a city near you. He's t doing a sort of a big USA tour, and there'll be open meetings in Utah and uh, San Francisco and other places. You can go to HRC's website about that. And for homeless LGBT youth in New York City, New Alternatives for Youth, one of our, of our favorite organizations run by Kate Barnhart, is opening a new facility on Christopher Street at St. John's Lutheran Church. And the fact is they haven't had services for, for a lot of uh, youth of color, gay youth of color down there, transgender also and lesbian and everything, uh, but they haven't had services for them down there for many years now. Even though they still gather yes. at the piers and on Christopher Street. So for information about them, uh, go to newalternativesnyc.org.
Lutheran.org. You've heard of Lutherans Concerned. I have. Well, I mean, it's been around since 1974 to make changes in the Lutheran Church. They've made some progress. They're, you know, they're, they're allowed to, uh, allowing ministers in lifelong same-gender relationships to serve in the church, etc. But they've changed their name. They're now called Reconciling Works. Just so you know, if you get an email from they're Reconciling gonna, Works. If you're going to change your name, couldn't you come up with that, something zippier? Well, uh, you read about it. Zippier. I mean, they have like, uh, <laughs> former NFL player Wade Davis is uh, now working at the Hetrick Martin Institute, according to a Well, to not a working there, I would say. He's representing them uh, for PR it purposes, It says right? working for. Okay. And uh, the big, contro big controversy in New York over the senior, over SAGE. You know, SAGE opened the first senior center sponsored by the city for uh, uh, older LGBT people. And that's all consolidated up in Chelsea. Well, they're going to close down their drop-in center in the village. And this has caused a big protest at the LGBT center. So we'll see what happens with that. International news. Well, we should also say that there's this march this week. Oh, yes, uh, Against please. Stop and Frisk. Yes. Uh, this is taking, the, uh, I think a lot of gay groups have gotten on board on this. Definitely. It's about time that the movement started showing some concern for some, it, you know, of course it does affect LGBT people. Yes. Especially transgender people. So they had a big press conference about this. But the march is this weekend Sunday, on Father's, Father's Day. Day. Gather well, at 1 p.m. Well, actually, no, they've changed it. It's now now three o'clock. That's when the march is. Yes. But the gathering, there will undoubtedly be many speeches, will start at uh, 1 p.m. at 110th. And Central Park West. Be yeah. And uh, be between, between and near, yeah, between Central Park West and 5th. So uh, anyway, there's going to be a march downtown to the mayor's house. Starting at 3, 2, 79th and 5th. Okay. Uh, all to... right. International news. Uh, Denmark has completely legalized same-sex marriage, uh, including letting the Evangelical Lutheran Church, which is the state religion, uh, perform the ceremonies, although they wrote a new service for same-sex couples because the right wing did not want the heterosexual service to serve for same-sex couples. Well, why shouldn't we have our own service? Well, it seems a little strange, uh, but nonetheless, the Christian Democrats, who are actually the more conservative uh, political group, will sue for religious freedom. But the law exempts uh, any religious yeah. official who don't, officials who don't want to officiate. Uh, those who are in civil partnerships, which have been legal in Denmark for 25 years, will automatically convert and to And there will marriage. be no more civil partnerships? I guess not if they're all automatically I don't like that idea. To, uh, well, I would like us preserving options for relationships. Anyway, uh, in Moscow, as an... Call it anything you want. Well, options. Uh, that that people, some people, some of some of our people don't want to get married, but they, they want to have, have to. they want to have relationship recognition, and it sounds like they're not going to be able to get it. That's the idea, and I some and there are non-gay people who want that too. That's what's at issue. That's what Peter. Well, Tatchell, then uh, then you have to define what's the difference. Well, I mean, it's partly because you know some of us don't want the. I'm not saying myself, but some of us don't want the word marriage because of its history and what and what what it is. We just want rights. We call it. We want it called something else. Uh, many people out there want it. I know. Sometimes this seems like the gay marriage show. I think you know, that's, that's what a we little, talk about. A well, picky. Well, they haven't gotten rid of domestic partnerships in the city of New York, mm -hmm. and I hope that they don't. Okay. All right. The uh, U.S. State Department did a good thing. They brought journalists from 20 countries to visit various LGBT organizations around the country. They took them to the offices of the Washington Blade newspaper. They had them sit down with Diego Sanchez, the transgender activist who works for Barney Frank. And these are people from Uganda and Moldova and Nigeria, this is some very countries where there's a lot of anti-gay stuff they going on. They took them to the Pentagon to learn about Don't Ask, Don't Tell repeal. They took them to meet uh, lesbian and gay legislators in Maryland. They took them to PFLAG. They took them to the It Gets Better offices. They also took them to the National Organization for Marriage, so it wasn't entirely one-sided, but it was evidently quite fascinating. So who won? <laughs> So as we said at the top of the show, Moscow has banned uh, gay pride for a century. 
That is the decision of this judge in uh, Well, Moscow. I think uh, we make a, uh, fun of it, but I think what happened was that the LGBT activists went to the court and a or went to uh, the city and asked for pride parade per permits right. for the next hundred and years. And they were denied. <laughs> yes, for the next hundred years. But they, they did this so that they could appeal to the European Court of Human Rights, which they will now do. And in... And... Uh, Novosibirsk in Russia, yes. the uh, side by side film festival was met by a lynch mob tactics uh, from anti-gay young people and very inadequate police protection there and they had to cancel the third and final day of the event. It was an LGBT film festival and the cops did absolutely nothing to help but contrary to expectations and predictions the cops in Split Croatia did show up. Split is the name of the place. To uh, protect the pride parade there. Last year they had horrendous violence, thousands of anti-LGBT demonstrators attacking a couple of hundred marchers. Through rocks and bottles and things yeah. like that. This year uh, several hundred marched for pride, including governor, government ministers. Because they want the country to be accepted in Europe and yes. be seen as a modern place. And they managed to keep away the anti-LGBT demonstrators, so it was a peaceful, non-violent experience. And I did put this under international news. Uh, there was somebody in Captain Scott's polar team named George Murray Levick, who was a, a, an expert on penguins. And Some he, years ago, this Oh, is. it was like 100 years ago. Uh, not, it was, well, yeah, it was more than 100 years ago. It was 1910. And he observed all this behavior among penguins that he was he thought was so depraved that he couldn't speak about it or circulate it. I mean, animal behavior, some of which was homosexual, some of which was they like to screw corpses. But, you know, the, the story says when a penguin falls down and gets in that position, the other penguin's <laughs> going to go for it. That's the way it works. But this guy anthropomorphized the There are the humans situation. who do that, too. <laughs> yes. All right, let's move on to AIDS and other medical news. Uh, good news out of the New York Court of Appeals, where an HIV-positive man had been convicted of uh, aggravated assault for biting a cop's finger, uh, but the Court of Appeals has vacated his conviction uh, because they said that body parts have been defined as not dangerous instruments. So the original conviction had condemned him because his fluids? saliva, his saliva uh, could somehow infect the cop, which, by the way, it has been proved does not happen. Uh, so he has had his conviction vacated. Good. Excellent news. Um, yet another story about drug-resistant gonorrhea. Now they say it has spread around the world. Again, this they think this started in Japan. I'm not trying to blame anybody or anything, but it can't be treated with the things that we have to treat gonorrhea. So folks... You know, just because, you know, we're, we've got to get things, these things under control, and you have to use safe sex all the time. Yes, uh, protection against uh, infections. Uh, interesting, next, on June 20th, I believe that's, yeah, next week, AMFAR, the American Foundation for AIDS Research, is sponsoring a briefing on Capitol Hill on AIDS research issues. And Judy Woodruff of CNN now, or formerly, right. is going to interview the so-called Berlin patient, the guy who uh, we all think has been cured of HIV. He thinks he has been, too. So does science. Uh, well, they call it an Timothy effective cure. Timothy Ray Brown. Well, that is not the final word. Uh, In fact, there is a new study that of him that has found traces of HIV oh. in him. And there is some question about whether this means that his bone marrow transplant from someone who had the right receptors. Natural block, immunity. Yeah. Uh, did not work as well as we thought. Or has he been reinfected? Or uh, has his HIV, did it mutate around the... Uh, if the one guy who got cured got reinfected, I give up. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, I know we're all human, <laughs> but... The spotlight is on you. Well, the sad news is that they have found traces of HIV in oh. him. 
well. So for Discour whatever it's, reason. It's discouraging because it's that natural immunity that they've been looking at to see if they can make some sort of synthetic thing that they could give to other people to protect them. And they have been looking at people with the, who are so-called naturally resistant, and they have a new study of them because they, they've been trying to figure out their, the reason for their natural resistance, and they have found that the T cells that they uh, had identified as uh, resistant do not all work the same right. way. And that you have to have sort of super T cells uh, that are highly effective as opposed to just run of the mill versions of these cells. Uh, the problem being, of course, that they don't know how to make them in right. the highly effective version. So it, uh, we're not I mean, terribly they're close. They're to, looking uh, for the strain it. that has molecules called receptors that are better able to identify HIV-infected white blood cells for attack. Yeah. And again, people with HIV have tons of these things, but it's only only if you've got these special ones that Anne was talking about are you going to be protected. And there is natural immunity. I mean, even though the you know the, they tried to yes. they tried to give the Berlin yes. patient immunity, there are people. I think one out of three hundred pe uh, people has has this natural immunity. They can't get an HIV infection. Cannot. Don't seem to. No, they can't. Yeah. I mean, that's the way it works. Uh, then there's the study about young adults and uh, substance abuse, and it found something very interesting. You know, we, we've, we, when we worked at Hedrick Martin, we always talked about the fact that uh, a lot of uh, LGBT <coughs> young people have higher rates of substance abuse and everything like that uh, than their straight counterparts. Well, what they're Living finding- Living in a stigmatizing sure. society and with rejecting but, families with, and all but, of that. Now, this is t 2012 study. Uh, this looks at uh, college students and and it found that if you are happy with your identification as uh, a homosexual, happy identification as heterosexual, uh, you have about the same rates of uh, substance abuse. It's when you are uh, um, less defined in your sexual orientation. This doesn't mean that you, you know, as I said in the beginning, you know, if, you're, if you can affirm your bisexuality, you probably also have the you know, same lack of a problem. But when you're sort of anxious about who you are, you're not sure who you are and all that kind of stuff, that's when you're more likely to use drugs and drink. QED would be my response. Et cetera. If you're confused, depressed, upset, you're going to have more substance and abuse problems. And I'm not going to do that story. On whatever basis. Okay. Uh, one real headline, the Food and Drug Administration has delayed its expected approval of Truvada, Truveda. Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> as pre-exposure prophylaxis to for people who are HIV negative to take to prevent infection. And how about <coughs> a glass of water for you? Excuse me. There you go. Uh, I have some cough drops if you'd like. Um, You're right. Okay. They've delayed the approval for three months. Uh, they want the drug manufacturer Gilead to refine its plan for both HIV negative and HIV positive people to make sure that HIV negative people know that they still need to use protection and they have to be very concerned about adherence to taking the drug and that HIV positive people shouldn't take it alone uh, because they can develop resistance that it's a good drug in combination with others for people who are HIV positive. Uh, and they also want Gilead to offer free HIV testing. And in fact, uh, June 27th is National HIV Testing Day. And if you go to the website hivtest.org, you can find out where anywhere in the world you can get an HIV test. And that'll give you some details on where to find a free test and what kind of test. Uh, for instance, the, the oral test is considered pretty accurate, but it has to be used correctly. And some people are finding that uh, the testing uh, facility is not waiting the required 20 minutes. Got to wait so 20 minutes. People are getting false negatives. So make sure that whether you're taking a blood test or an oral test that it's administered appropriately. I, I knew a guy who uh, got tested once at the health department and then you don't come back for like a week or something for your results and things like that, at least at the time. And he went into a total panic and was uh, catatonic on the floor and all this kind of stuff. So he went to one of these places with the, they call them instant tests, they're not. Uh, but he had to stand there with the guy doing the test and then go back into the room while he waited for the 20 minutes for it to develop and all that kind of stuff before he was sure that he didn't have it and he didn't have it. 
but wow, it can be it can can be anxiety provoking still for a lot of people. But but the point is, people do need to get tested and find out. I mean, I was very discouraged to uh, to when I talked to people from the Latino Commission on AIDS that. 42% of the people who test positive w with them, when they come to them, uh, have AIDS within a year, meaning that they waited so they long late. and, they test, test, and they test late. Should if be routine for everybody. If you're engaging in risk activity, just get tested and you know face the, face the music and get, get the treatments that are gonna keep you healthy. Okay. okay. Entertainment news? Sure. Our new best friend is Carrie Underwood, the American Idol country singer winner uh, she's terrific. Uh, she grew up in a Baptist household in Oklahoma. She has now left that church and is now going to a church that uh, uh, is gay friendly, according to her. That's how she defines it. And she is vocal now in her support for marriage equality. And she she gave praise an, the Lord. She gave an interview to a British paper because she's performing over there, and they asked her about all this. And she was very forthright in condemning those who use the Bible to hate. So thank you, Carrie Underwood. That was terrific. Maybe there's hope for Shelley Wright to get work again. <laughs> I think she should be the opening act for Carrie Underwood. Why not? Just an idea. Why not? Um, the documentary film about John McNeil, the uh, gay priest who wrote the book The Church and the Homosexual in, 19, in the early 70s, uh, it was published in the mid-70s. It sat in a drawer in the Vatican for a long time before they let it out, but they did let it out and it caused a great controversy. Anyway, he's in his late 80s now. He's going to be there. It's in New York uh, on uh, June the 16th at the SVA Theater at 23rd and 8th. Um, I'll be there for that uh, and then see my old friend John McNeil. Neil. Uh, United in Anger, uh, Jim Hubbard and Sarah Schulman's film about ACT UP is going to play at the Quad in July. I've oh, been asked great. to uh, lead a discussion after one of the shows. It's a so terrific July film. July 11th, it is. Anne is in it. Oh, she's everywhere. Um, and <laughs> oh, I'm in the McNeil film. I should have said that. I, guess. Ah, I, mean, I forgot see. that I was Conflict in it. Conflict of interest. Well, I'm a dirty atheist, you know. And so. the news continues to pile up about John Travolta, <laughs> now his secretary from 1978 to 1994, Joan Edwards, has told the National Enquirer, "Of course, I knew he was gay. It never bothered me." And he had a six-year affair with his pilot. He's a screwed-up Scientologist. Yeah, I guess you so. Know. And you watched the Tonys. I didn't. Anything oh, gay? Oh, well, yes. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris hosted. <laughs> and he's a big gay. <laughs> but they didn't do, the, they didn't do any, a number anywhere near as good as last year's. Uh, it's not, the theater is not just for gays anymore. I didn't like that. I like that very much. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the... Uh, See, we don't agree on everything. Harvey Firestein didn't win. There's not a lot gay to report. Tell me if I missed anything. Uh, uh, Judith light one. She's very gay friendly. Extremely gay friendly. Um, but that was about the gayest thing about the Tony Awards. Yeah, she's she's been Byrne. she's been our best friend, especially in the AIDS movement and yeah. everything for uh, many, many, many years. Forever. But I, I predicted the Tonys very badly. They seem to like the play once. Uh, I didn't is, watch it. Did okay. I miss anything? Uh, there are a few few nice moments. Uh, next week, I'll be able to talk about Jim Parsons in Harvey. He's oh, now that okay. he's out playing yeah. in Harvey. Yes. Uh, Casually out, routinely out. That's the new thing, <laughs> yes. you know. So maybe he'll ho co host Gay USA. Have a wonderful Pride Month wherever you are. And we will see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye bye.